All right, here's something from Fair that Tim brings up. And uh, this is something worth noting. And this is from Fair. Fair is uh, the uh, organization for fairness and accuracy in reporting. They do some pretty good work. They got some pretty good uh, journalists over there. Action alert. It's been over a year since MSNBC has mentioned the U.S. war in Yemen. Why has the number one outlet of, uh, of alleged anti-Trump quote-unquote resistance completely ignored his most devastating war? This is by Adam Johnson, my favorite reporter at FAIR. Uh, Adam does some pretty amazing work. As FAIR has noted before to MSNBC, the carnage and destruction the U.S. and its Gulf monarchy allies are leveling against the poorest country in the Arab world is simply a non-issue. On July 2nd, a year has passed since the cable network's last segment mentioning U.S. participation in the war on Yemen, which has killed in excess of 15,000 people and resulted in over a million cases of uh, chlorea, chlorea. The U.S. is backing a Saudi-led bombing campaign with intelligence, refueling, political cover, military hardware, and, as of March, ground troops. None of this matters at all to what Adweek calls the network of the resistance. By way of contrast, as MSNBC was marking a year without mentioning the U.S. role in Yemen, the PBS News Hour was running a three-part series on the war, with the second part headline, American-made bombs in Yemen are killing civilians, destroying infrastructure, and fueling anger at the U.S. MSNBC chat show slash Starbucks commercial. <laughs> nice. Good job, Adam. Morning Joe did run one segment that vaguely mentioned the war on Yemen but failed to note that the U.S. role in it is all at all, much less the Washington is arming and backing the conflict's primary aggressor. Instead, they did perverse inversion, previously mastered by Washington Post's Jackson Deal, uh, of not only ignoring the U.S.'s major role in killing of thousands, but painting the U.S. as a noble haven for refugees. Yeah, it's not Russia. It's not Stormy Daniels. It's not um, something that's going to grab quick ad revenue. And by the way, MSNBC, history of being a pro-war network. It used to be owned by General Electric. Now it's owned by Comcast. All the corporate media is pro-war because they are incentivized to be, to be so. Because defense tractor, contractors buy ad time there. And oil and gas companies buy ad time there. They're not buying ad time to get the word out. Nobody's thinking about, man, where am I going to get my next bomb from? Man, I wonder if I don't put car my if I don't put gasoline in my car, will it still go? No, it won't. We all know that. It won't go still. They're not trying to get the word out. They're trying to buy favorable coverage, and it works. Because we don't really have news agencies at the corporate level. We have PR agencies disguised as news outlets. And it shouldn't be legal. MSNBC shouldn't be allowed to call itself a news organization. Fox News shouldn't be allowed to call itself a news organization. CNN shouldn't be allowed to call itself a news organization. They have the right to publish content, sure. I'm not going to say they can't publish content. They have the right to publish content. But they should have a disclaimer saying who owns them and what exactly they are. And they should be designated a public relations organization because that's what they are. News organizations should solely have no profit motive whatsoever, other than what is necessary to sustain themselves, uh, you know, especially if they're going to be widely distributed around the country, news organizations. Kind of like the way England does it with the BBC. There's still independent media over there, but the BBC, which, yes, does have its problems, is largely a public uh, utility for people. Is it flawed? Of course it is. If we did something similar here, would it be flawed? Of course it would be. But again, compared to what we have. I mean, our, our media structure is, is absolutely repulsive and appalling. And are there worse ones out there in the world? Yeah, probably. But, I mean, we really, as far as a compromised media structure, our media structure is toxic to the idea of democratic participation. It is actually the complete opponent of it. And I know I'm probably preaching to the choir right now, but, you know, it bears repeating. Thank you for sharing that. That was a really good piece by Adam Johnson. I appreciate it very much. Good find, Tim. Good find. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. 
Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your 